Hello everyone. My name is Trinity Aeronaut and today I would like to show you how to take a really great portrait. The, uh, the addition of mesh heads into Second Life has certainly made taking portraits easier and I have to say I've seen a huge improvement in my own photographs since the introduction of mesh heads and since I've been wearing them. However, even with mesh heads, there are still certain things you can do in world to take a better photo. Some things you even have to do to take a better photo. So let's let me go ahead and cam in here. And you can come in one of two ways. You can either move your camera in by using the camera controls on the keyboard. And that's fine to get a certain distance. But when you want to get close up, you are going to have to hit Control V because anything else is going to give you kind of fish, a fish eye, uh, a, 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 a kind of um, uh, um, deal. So go in as close as you can with the camera controls. And then after that, I want you to go back and hit control zero to get as close as you can or as close as you need to as close as you prefer to get to get out of it I want you to hit control nine and that'll take you back to your original view and like I said when you want to close in go in as close as you can get with your camera controls but after that I want you to hit Control zero to get as close as you need to get. Now, that gives us a very, very nice, much, much better um, image. But it's still not a great image. And some ways we have to improve this image is by figure looking taking a good look and deciding what it is you want and what it is you don't want on your on in your final uh, photo this hair it's a lovely hair it is but do is it is it the hair you is it a hair you really want in your photograph because if you notice when you when you take the final photo it is going to be cut off at the bottom which is kind of a harsh look and um and it kind of uh also there's a lot of kind of stringiness to it um when you're up close and uh I don't know. I just I just don't like the hair. It's not something I would. Uh, it's not something that I think that improves the look of this particular portrait. I, as a matter of fact, I think it I, it would be distracting and it would take my face down. Well, it would drag me would drag my view down to the bottom of the picture. And you really do want your view on the face. Also, if you look at it, you will notice over on the right hand side that when I blink. I'm I'm I've got an alpha there that's kind of cutting into the hair itself and so I think this hair I just really don't don't want um at least not for this photo don't get me wrong it's a beautiful hair and it is a, a hair that if you were to do a full a more full length uh photo you would want but for now it is not the hair I want I think I want something a little shorter so uh, that's the that's the look we're going to go for. Uh, so let's go ahead and get rid of this hair, and we'll put on a different hair. Let's 
do something. I don't know. Let's do something. Shy is a favorite of mine. So let's do, let's do shy hair. Okay, so we've got a few choices here. Let's do this one and perhaps put the little top knot on. Looks like this got a little bit of light to it. Okay, much, much nicer hair. However, it looks as if there is a top to it. So perhaps we may want to just pull back a little bit to get that top. Uh, I don't know. Uh, this I don't like. I don't care for this hair. There's it's a little bit in the face. So let's choose something else. Um, pixie boy. Let's choose pixie boy. Very nice. Okay. That is much, much better look. Or, and I think it provides just enough interest around the face to make this an interesting, um, an, an, an interesting uh, photo. So then the next thing you have to ask yourself is, does the hairstyle go with your accessories? And are your accessories fitted so that that you have a realistic look on the image? In this case, I think it probably does fit the style, but I think not fit the neck. So I think I'm going to have to take that and bring it down a little bit. Now keep in mind that that oftentimes you'll fit a necklace so that it fits all the way around the neck but when you are dealing with a photograph you don't have to fit around the neck you can hide you can actually pull this forward you can drag it back whatever you need to do even if it's not fitting on one side of the neck or the back of the neck it is fine as long as it is fitting just around the edge of the neck now, if you look, I'm seeing a lot of different lights here because I'm set on, as most of us are, I am set on world. When I go to environmental e editor, I am set on always use parcels region settings. It's not the only thing that I'm dealing with here. I'm also getting some look here because uh, my preferences are on low. They're on low. I've got a draw distance of 96%. I've got, I'm I've got my particles down. I've got my load down on my objects, all of these things. So I can move around and, and really, uh, you know, and go to fairs and go to events and stuff like that. But that's great for doing all of those things. However, it is not great for taking portraits. So I'm going to jack these up all the way as high as I can get them. In this case, it's ultra. Now, I am not going to jack them all the way up at once. I just did that and I crashed. And my video crashed, and so this is the second uh, 
the second uh, version that I'm doing of this. Uh, I'm also going to jack up my draw distance, uh, my max part, all of these things, because even though uh, something like draw distance may not make a difference to you, you think that because you think that you're taking something up close, it does, however, add extra data into the uh, file, which is exactly what you need. Now, um, also, the objects and sculpts, the load is going all the way up to four. So do make sure that you've got that done. Um, keep in mind all of these uh, shadows, complexity, uh, water reflection, everything, all of this adds adds da data to the um, to the photo. Uh, also, uh, go under hardware settings, anthropic uh, filtering should be clicked, and anti-aliasing should be taken as high as they can go, or as high as your particular ca um, uh, hardware can take. My hardware here is by at four. My last uh, computer actually went up to 8, so uh, actually it went up to 12. One of my machines actually went up to 12, and I think another one went to 8, this one went to 4, so it's just, it's just depends on, 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 on your machine itself. So anyway, uh, you want to also check both of these. Um, I haven't made any changes here. You're going to choose OK, and this is what you're going to get. Once you've put your world onto one of uh, your envi environmental settings onto away from always use parcel settings, customize my environment, and then do environment uh, NAMS Optimal Skin and Prim. This is a little secret that every model knows and every photographer knows, and now you know. This is the way it looks with NAMS Optimal Skin and Prim. This is the way it looks with NAMS Optical Skin 2. And this is the way it looks with NAMS Optical Skin 1. Now, Today I'm going to teach you just how to do a standard photo in Nan's Optimal Skin. However, there is a whole range of beautiful wind light settings here. And that is for another lesson. Okay? So right now, I, I've, you're just going to have all you can take. Okay. Once I've got all this done... Then I need to do a few more things up here. For example, right now I need to have you put a check mark at your high res snapshot. Now that might, might that might not make a difference to what you see on the screen, but that's going to make a huge difference into in the photograph. Now. I also want to have you do a s open the snapshot dialog box, and here we have a few different settings that I want to make sure I show you. So, if, if you choose by the refresh button to click on this window, it's a toggle. If you or originally, when you first open it, you're going to see it as this small snapshot here. But I prefer the bigger snapshot, even though it covers the face. Basically, what this tells me is it gives me a whole lot more of an idea, bigger, what I'm taking. It also gives me an idea of whether or not it's in the center of the image. Uh, you really don't want a photograph to be in the center of a triangle. If it's a square, then you do want it in the center. That's almost the pyramid effect. But when dealing with a, with a rectangle like this, it's far more interesting an image to have it 
more to the right or more to the left of the image. So what are some of these settings? Uh, you've got three different uh, captures here. You've got color, you've got depth, and you've got depth 24-bit. This is depth 24-bit, which is not great. This is simply depth, which is dark, and colors, want, you want colors to be your choice. Uh, you're also going to have a filter. You're going to have a filter section here, so uh, some of the some of the uh, different uh, looks you might want to get uh, when you're dealing with a filter. That's antique. Oh, that's bad trip. Just different kind of looks. You've got a soft focus down here, which would be nice, you hope or thought, but it really does kind of uh, fade out this, or it blurs out this point this image to the point that you really, really, you really can't really use it. Um, although that might look nice it, once you've actually taken it. So let's just snap it and see. And we'll go in and look at that. Yep. Okay. You can see it's saved to the saved to the disk. Okay. So that's soft focus. Um, these are two. These are two of my favorite sepia. which is a beautiful look that's really gorgeous and black and white for those of you wondering how images are taken by black and white by uh, black and white and so when you want to take a black and white or when you want a black and white image you just go here okay so that is your choice as far as filters go, some of these, you just need to uh, play with um, some of these filters and uh, just check them out. And keep in mind, if you want to go back, you choose no filter. Now, there are several choices. One, one of these choices, and if you are, I'm so glad, because if you looked at, now the eyes are slightly closed. Just hit a refresh. And... There you go. That's the next. That's the next capture of this image. Okay. So, as I said, you can do. You have several choices here. You have directly into your inventory, which will go into your snapshot folder. You have. Uh, you have to Flickr or um, Facebook, and you also have to disk. If if you're going to take, if you're serious about taking really fantastic portraits, you're going to want to send this to disk because once it's in the disk, it's going to have all the information and it's going to be available for you to rework or to refine. Okay, you need to clean this image up and, and refine it. So you can, and you have that choice. You can do that by one of several things. You can use PicMonkey. You could use your old version of Picasa. You could uh, use whatever version of, uh, of photo manipulation software you might have. You could use GIMP or you can use Photoshop. Now, I intend to teach you how to use Photoshop. This is the very first lesson, so I'm basically just going to cover how to get this photograph out, Second Life, at the finest, best image that you can get. But in future episodes, I am going to teach you how to take this into Photoshop and manipulate it so that it is the perfect image. But here... You want to take it to disk, and you want to give yourself as much information as possible, which means you want to do a custom image because, as you can see, these other images are smaller. They are, they are 320 by 240 and 680, but even this one down here, this big one, is 1600 by 1200. That's 
DPI, that is resolution. That is DPI, dots per inch. Okay? That is dots per inch. Look at this width and height that I managed to get. It is 5,000 by 2,000. Now, I'm betting you're wondering why it's 5,000 by 2,000. That's because I've constrained the image. And I suggest you, re you constrain the image because the image, when you custom, customize this, it's going to be at whatever size your second knife is going to set this at whatever size your monitor is proportion wise. So if you manage, if you constrain proportions, you're going to be able to get as much data out as you possibly can. And you want to take that data as high as you can without crashing your computer. My particular crash point is 5,000. I tried taking this to 6,000. It took one or two shots, and then it started crashing every time I took a shot. So at 5,147, it does not crash. So this is the shot I'm going to. This is the, this is the custom setup that I'm going to keep. So again, constrain your proportions so that you can get as much surface in as you can get. Now, you're going to take this in one of three formats, PNG, JPEG, or BMPs. You can see that PNGs and BMPs are both lossless. What does that mean? That means that their compression or that their compression is such that you lose no pixels. Or, in the case of bitmaps, BMPs, you actually have no compression, so you lose no pixels. Okay? JPEGs, you lose pixels. And once you've lost them, you can't get them back. So just keep in mind that when you choose a JPEG, you really do lose pixels. And I want you to not lose pixels because you can, I want you to have as much information as you can work with. So go ahead and choose the PNG simply because the bitmaps are so big. PNGs are bigger than JPEGs, but that's, they're still smaller than bitmaps. Okay? PNGs are smaller than bitmaps, but they have more information in them than a JPEG. So, when you choose your PNG, at this point, you're going to want to save it. And once you've saved it, You're going to exit out of Second Life, and you're going to want to bring it into some kind of uh, program like Photoshop, which you can bring to here. Let me, there it is right here and that is our image that is it for this version of of uh, for this tutorial and the next time I see you the next tutorial I give you will be in creating a, the perfect portrait from this image okay and I'll show you all my little tips and tricks this has been Trinity Aeronaut and this is our first lesson in how to take a great portrait I think we're coming along pretty well and I will see you next time if you like this video please if you enjoyed it please like it and 
join my channel uh, so that you can see more. Thank you and bye.